hello everybody <clears throat> good afternoon okay if you have seen my announcement uh, you will know that I am not very well today so I am afraid I can't uh, conduct the class the class at <coughs> two o'clock this afternoon uh, okay I'm about this close to <laughs> to being very very drowsy due to the medication I'm sorry about this uh, but let's uh, let's just figure out how to uh, move forward okay uh, without actually missing out on uh, any content okay so today what I plan to do is record uh, the lecture for lesson number two uh, I, I do not plan to do this uh, in the future because uh, I mean to record yeah I don't I don't plan to do this in the future because I feel that students can benefit more if the lessons are done live and you can ask questions directly uh, even though you might feel shy at, at right now but in the future you never know you might have some really important question to ask right so it's important that we meet at least once a week okay uh, especially for those students who are not uh, in Seg University campus right <coughs> so you know just uh, today is just a special uh, occasion so topic two uh, focuses on speaking, listening, and non-verbal communication. So we're looking at three areas of business communication uh, that involves verbal, okay, uh, communication, oral, oral, listening, and also non-verbal like body language and such. Okay, I will be moving a bit faster than usual, okay, because you know it's a it's a it's a video after all, and there will be no break. So if you feel that uh, the video is too fast, you can always pause and you know uh, scroll back and uh, watch again. So the question that we want to ask is, as always, why are communication skills important? Effective communication will help us to <coughs> secure an interview. Okay, so one of the benefit of having good uh, business communication is that you are able to get an interview faster and earlier than everybody else and of course once you're at the interview having communication skills will help you get the job and do your job well and obviously in the future help you advance in your career although we are aware that you know you don't necessarily need uh, good communication skills to advance in your career there's a lot of career that does not require uh, a person to have uh, you know uh, excellent communication skills right uh, you know, especially in the technical fields uh, or maybe you are a person with unique skills that uh, are valuable to the company therefore your advancement will be based on that however I think a majority of uh, people all right majority of us will depend on how we navigate the corporate life with our communication skills. <coughs> Start with oral communication, speaking and listening. So oral communication in the workplace can take a variety of forms. Number one, private discussion between two employees, a conversation over lunch, a gossip in the lift, a telephone conversation, a meeting in the corridor, informal gathering of staff and instructing subordinates. So these are examples of informal oral communication. Things can happen, okay, and in any space in the company, okay. So having the right attitude, having the right ideas about what is uh, okay to say and what is not will be a good asset here. Okay. So we also have more formal oral communication situations such as uh, presentation to clients, dealing with clients, uh, having a formal meetings, uh, interviews, okay, that could be you interviewing for a job or somebody, uh, you interviewing somebody else for a job. <coughs> Training sessions, giving a presentation, conferences and seminars as well. So most people find talking easier than writing because phrases can sometimes be used in speech that would not be appropriate in written communication. So in a lot of cases, when you talk, it's easier to, you know, sort of like uh, put your words or put your thoughts across easier. Some people prefer writing, like myself. I find that in a formal communication, writing helps me uh, take my time and organize my 
ideas more clearly but there are people who prefer to speak instead uh, you know this can be a problem if the two people communicating have different preference maybe one person like talking the other person like writing uh, you're gonna have some issues sometimes okay so however if understanding is to be complete and effective your spoken language needs to be chosen carefully in today's workplace everyone will at some time or another be required to give a presentation for example and and uh, you know or being asked for ideas or opinions on a specific topic okay so the next one the other half of the oral oral a u r a l and o r a l uh, communication skills is listening skills okay listening is half of it and it is a skill that needs to be practiced and taken as seriously as speaking and writing okay the consequences of not listening carefully could be disastrous okay there's a lot of uh, you know case study that talks about how poor listening damages the organization's reputation and also how poor listening skills uh, <coughs> you know can create conflicts and so on like that Listening is essential because how you listen conveys meaning to the other person and it helps to make the exchange successful. Now we viewed this similar model last week okay, re regarding the communication model. So for listening process, it's very similar. You know, you receive the message, you interpret the message or in other words, you decode the message and then you remember the message. Okay, you evaluate the message, respond to it, and act on it. I think one thing that might be slightly unique to listening is the fact that you can decide as a listener whether the information belongs. Okay, if we're talking about remembering over here, okay, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not because I'm recording blind here. Uh, remembering. You can decide whether you want to store the information in the short-term memory or in the long-term memory. Short-term memory means that you are probably not going to use that information in the future. Okay, You just need to know it for right now. Uh, long-term memory means that this is vital information. You need to remember this for a very long time. Okay, And then you, know, you evaluate the message, you respond, etc. Okay, so barriers to effective listening as we talked about last week. Okay, so these are some examples. I'm sure you've done this in the tutorial as well. Like prejudgment, selfishness, selective listening are some examples of this. Okay, all right. So a bad listener versus a good listener. Okay, so this is a table that I recommend you memorize. This is a very popular exam question. Okay, a bad listener is usually very easily distracted. Uh, okay. So as soon as you listen to a lecture, you know, something like that, you start to, uh, you know, go on your phone, doing stuff, you know, updating, whatever, okay? Daydreams, yeah, fix attention and tune up dry subject, boring subject. A good listener makes the most of the opportunity and fight the distraction, try to go over the distraction, try to not let the distraction affect you, makes an effort to concentrate, uses body language to show attention, Okay, you 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 know when you sit a certain way, and the the speaker can see you. Your body language is very positive. Uh, usually, it encourages the speaker to speak more or speak better. Okay. Okay. So a bad listener also tunes out if delivery is poor. Okay. A good listener, however, forgive delivery errors. So if you're listening to your friend's presentation, and you feel that your friend is not such a great uh, orator or speaker that's not the most important thing the important thing is the message that your friend is trying to bring okay so a bad listener tends to argue he tends or she tends to uh, directly argue with the speaker okay a good listener interrupts only when you need to clarify if the message is really completely lost on you a uh, bad listener reacts to emotions good listener is not obsessed with emotional words Okay, so if, for example, the speaker <coughs> says one point uh, in a very emotional way, very strongly worded message, uh, a bad listener might react to that, might get angry or might get triggered uh, as the word that is used commonly these days. A good listener will be able to sort of like discard or like, you know, step over 
these emotional words and remain focused on the subject. Okay, you, you don't get distracted basically. So to improve listening skill, these are general tips. Prepare to listen, clear your mind so that your attention is assured. Uh, avoid any prejudgment. Don't prejudge anybody when you're listening to them. Do not prejudge the speaker because of appearance of the speaker or occupation of the speaker. Just because the speaker is not the top guy in that company does not mean that the speaker is not important. Okay? Right. Be open minded. Yes. Okay. And establish eye contact. <coughs> <coughs> Do not interrupt. When the speaker is talking, unless unless you need to clarify, meaning that the speaker has said something very important, and you just want to make sure that you heard him or her correctly, so you you know maybe raise your hand and at the right moment and try to ask the question. But overall, try not to interrupt the speaker. Watch for signals. Speak up aspect that the speaker considers important. Okay, like watching uh, the speakers. Posture and gesture. So a good listener just doesn't listen to the words, but also listen to the body language. Judge the content, not the delivery. Appraise the content instead of the speaker. Consider the main points and ask if they make sense. Extract the keywords, pick out and repeat to yourself some keywords or phrases. Okay, so give feedback, you know, in the communication cycle that we talked about. You have to return the feedback to the speaker. Uh, this can be done verbally by, you know, making a, a noise like, uh-huh, you know, yes, I see. Or by using body language like nodding or smiling. Or, you know, short sentences like, I understand what you mean, you know, something like this. Try to block out any distractions, okay, which is very important. Right, so finally is non-verbal communication and how can we communicate non-verbally? Okay, in face-to-face -face encounters, non-verbal communication is often just as important as verbal com. Okay, if are you speaking as you are speaking information can be conveyed non-verbally as well as verbally. Okay. So what this means is that when we are speaking, the listener doesn't only listen to what we are saying, they also look at how we stand, our tone of voice, the way we say our sentences. Okay, so for example, if we stutter or we often uh, stop, start, stop, start when we are speaking, then the listener might think, hmm, maybe the speaker is not prepared. And that, you know, communicates that to the speaker, to the listener, sorry. So nonverbal signals of listeners will provide instant feedback and nonverbal communication is often also referred to body language. So let's look at different types of nonverbal com non communication. First is posture. This is how you stand and sit. Okay, so maybe during the tutorial, you can ask your lecturer, you know, for each of these, <coughs> you can demonstrate and, and, you know, physically move around the class and, and you know, sit and stand and your lecturer probably have some tips on how to do that. Facial expressions are faces, okay? that you make when communicating a wide range of emotion okay try to have uh, an interesting uh, you know varied facial expression because you don't want to appear to be nonchalant nonchalant is like you know your face doesn't change your face doesn't have any movement any expression so the speaker might be very discouraged if he or she look at the face like that okay uh, what is it rbf right <laughs> resting b face Okay, so many gestures are used as we speak and in listening as well. Okay, when speaking to one person, try to look them in the eye. Okay, so this might be difficult for a lot of Asian students because in Asia, a lot of cultures do not encourage eye contact. You know, we are discouraged from making eye contact, especially with people who are older, right? So we tend to look away. So I think for this one, you can also apply cultural context. If your culture or the peop the person you're talking to comes from a culture where eye contact is not preferred or is considered rude, then don't insist on eye contact. Uh, don't like you know follow their face around as they're turning left. You also like you know walk in front of them and say you know <laughs> okay. So that's not necessary. So it's always good to check 
the background or just to to see the, when you're talking to see what the reaction is the person might be for example a very modern individual okay so therefore eye contact is not an issue touching okay touch is an important tool to convey warm reassurance support encouragement and comfort so learn about how to shake hands or how to greet somebody in other cultures as well <coughs> your standard shaking hands your, your handshake might not work in muslim countries as an example where you know men and women are not you know uh not say not allowed but not encouraged to uh touch physically Okay. However, men and men in a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries tend to have very affectionate uh, touching, like you know, body body language or how to say, uh, a very what's the word? Uh, close or intimate. I think the word is intimate method of greeting when it comes to male and male, which include hugging, kissing the cheek, and so on like that. So you know, but you can't do that to the women. Then you, then you're probably not gonna ride the plane back to Malaysia after that. Okay, how to improve nonverbal communication skills? Then, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, first, be honest, especially when communicating emotion. Don't lie. Try to be as honest as possible about how you feel. Most cultures, a lot of cultures, respect honesty in communication, especially in business. Use a firm, uh, friendly handshake when meeting new people. Yeah. Maintain eye contact with your entire audience, reinforce your words with tones and gestures, and be aware of your posture, you know, how you sit, how you stand, and so on like that. So we'll get into, I think, uh, cultural communication somewhere in the, you know, in the, in the syllabus, where we talk a little bit more about different cultures and how they communicate, right? So other tips include use appropriate gestures to support your points, okay, that include hand movements. Uh, imitate the posture and appearance of people you want to impress okay so what this means is that you do a technique called mirroring I'm not sure if I mentioned this to the whole class but I did mention it to my tutorial class a mirroring technique is where your body kind of mimics the person in front of you as if you are looking at a mirror so if the person has his right hand in front then you should have your left hand in front okay so like a mirror right just just imagine in your head like you're looking at the mirror you're copying how the person in the mirror look like you know you're sitting down exactly like that person so what this does is create a very unique uh, thought in the the person's brain the other person's brain that you know almost like I'm looking at myself in the mirror and therefore they tend to become less emotionally challenged and therefore it helps with negotiation it helps with uh, clarifying explaining and so on like that okay okay show respect touch people only when appropriate smile generally okay fake one will be very obvious you know those those people who, who don't know how to smile right they smile with their teeth uh, but their eyes uh, you know show evil okay so make sure that you know you practice your smile do you have a weird smile i have a weird smile i know this uh i don't practice i i just i just embrace the weirdness of my smile uh you know so but you don't have to do that you can uh you know probably practice in front of the mirror you know find a way to smile where it looks genuine and friendly okay all right as promised that's all very quick okay so that you know uh, you don't have to listen for too long this week okay so we'll do more work when we get to the tutorial section with your respective lectures okay sorry i can't answer any questions today because of uh, our situation but i'm sure i'll be able to answer and your lecture will be able to answer your questions during the tutorial session okay so please uh, also communicate with your lectures about the assignments deadlines and so on like that every college will have different deadlines you know I have specified in general you know where the deadlines will be to your lecturers but at the end of the day it depends on lecture because you know we are in different states so there might be public holidays you know and so on like that and also your exam dates might might be different
Okay, slightly. All right. Okay. Okay, that's all, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, have a good day and stay healthy. All right. Bye bye.